So the portico valve is a self-expanding nitinol percutaneous aortic valve. Started clinical use in 2012 in Europe. I was approved in Europe and it's been used in there extensively. Now 15,000 patients have received the portico valve so far. In America, the valve is not approved. So an IDE randomized pivotal trial was initiated, completed in 2017. A year follow-up was completed in November 2018. But a new delivery system has been developed for the portico valve, which with great advantages. So the FDA has requested that instead of reviewing the original trial by itself with the old delivery system, that 100 patients be added with a new FlexNav delivery system. That registry is ongoing. Uh, the first 40 some patients have been enrolled, so there are 60 more to be enrolled at the end of which it'll have to be followed for 30 days. That data is been going to be combined with the original IDE, and all of that will be presented to the FTA. So by the end of this year, sometime, uh, we expect to have FDA submission and approval. So the portico valve, as I said, is a self-expanding valve, intra-annular valve. It's not supraannular, as some of the others have expanded. It has a great advantage that as soon as you begin deploying it, it begins functioning. So there's no hypotension during delivery. And that makes it an ideal valve for patients that are in some form unstable, bad left ventricular function, or very sick for other reasons. Uh, the valve is extremely flexible. Some patients with very tortuous access, iliac artery is a yoda, is sending a yoda, this valve follow turns like no other. It's flexible in 360 degrees. Some of the others flex only in one direction. This is 360. So very flexible, easy to deliver, hemodynamically very stable. Another good reason to use this valve is that it has very large cells in the stent frame. So when you need to access the coronary arteries later on, it's the easiest valve to access them. There's usually no impediment and it's almost like if there was no valve in there. I would say to them what the users are saying. They love the valve. It's very stable during deployment. It's very simple to deploy. You follow certain rules for optimal deployment, and it always works. Um, the lower part of the valve is cylindrical. It's not funnel shaped. So it has very little tendency to dive into the left ventricle upon release. So very stable deployment, as I said, hemodynamically very stable. The users love the valve and tend to use it very frequently. Now with the new delivery system, FlexNav, which should be approved worldwide sometime end of the year, early next year, the valve is extremely dependable. You set a target position and you deploy gently and it stays there, it doesn't migrate. And when you can choose an ideal position, you can go very high. Very high, there is very little need for pacemaker because it doesn't affect the AV conduction system. We believe there is less paravalvular leak and again, great hemodynamic stability. So it's, it's a very good valve to use. So as I said, the randomized trial, we're still blinded to the final data, but there's almost a thousand patients from multiple sites in Europe, an all comers registry that was presented last year at the cardiology meetings and published. And in those thousand patients, the results of TAVR using this valve are excellent. They are comparable to the other registries with the core valve and the sapient three.